This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your Sunset Trail 33CK. Okay, I'm here on the door side. I'll walk towards the rear. Here you have a spray port. Just got a quick connect for a sprayer. That is up in the front compartment. You have a uh, outside kitchen. This is the quick connect. Let me get a better picture here. The quick connect hose here. Um, let me open it up for you. I need both hands. Okay. So basically, you have to plug this in for the LP. So this end goes onto here, right? And then the other end goes onto there. And there's a that black lever there is to turn the gas on and off. Okay, so um, to use your uh, range top on the outside, you have to plug it in. Okay, the refrigerator. As soon as you plug in your trailer, it turns on, so it's it's. Uh, always ready to go as long as you're plugged in. You got a power awning with an LED light strip. You got a ground control stabilizing system, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, power and antenna out if you want to put a TV outside. Outside speakers. Your step folds right into the trailer, which is a very stable step. Okay up here to the front compartment this is your hitch uh, we'll show you how it uh, operates when you um, get here to pick your trailer up uh, the tongue jack also if you see there's a plug on it here in the top I mean a rubber plug you can pull that out and you can actually crank it manually using this if it ever failed so that's what that's for um, that's your hose for the sprayer that I told you about okay all right moving along this is a port for a solar battery charger panel um, or solar panel battery charger if you ever get one you can plug it right into there and uh, it'll charge your battery deep cycle marine battery got two LP tanks let me get the cover off here for yeah Two 20 pound tanks. Of course, a power tongue jack, like we discussed. Um, this is an automatic changeover LP regulator. So, this is just a you, you point that at the tank you want to check, and it, if it turns red basically in there, it, it's telling you it's it's um, the tank is empty. So, it's just it's a gauge, it's not a selector. It, it'll draw the door side tank down first, then the automatic switch over to the other one and back and forth as they empty. So, it does that automatic. All right. All right. Okay, so this is your ground control system here. Now it has directions here for every um, function that it does. I can only guide you through it slightly here. Um, you you can read the step by step instructions, and it's it's pretty pretty informative. So you're going to turn it on. Okay. To. Uh, auto level it you're just going to push auto level right and it'll it'll you know basically steady the trailer and it'll retract the tongue jack right so then when you scroll through this let's so say you want to put it back down you'll scroll through this uh, auto hitch height is what you want and if you push uh, enter to begin it'll retract it for you the reason they call it automatic hitch or auto hitch height is because um, it'll automatically return to the to the height that was at when you took it off the hitch the prior time. It only remembers one height, so when it, whatever it was at last time when you took it off the hitch, it'll go back to that. So it should be ready to, to uh, hook right up to. Um, uh, but that will retract the jacks for you, all of them. Okay. Um, so other than that, you can do them one at a time. There, if you scroll through, there's a manual mode right there and you can do them one by one but you're you're going to be using the auto level function that's the most common okay all right okay 
<coughs> excuse me, this is your city water hookup. So nine times out of 10, you're gonna be using this as a water source. You just hook the hose up and you're ready to go. This is a fill for your uh, fresh water tank, your onboard fresh water tank. Uh, for example, if you go to an older state park, they'll have, they won't have plumbing on the campsite, but they'll have a fill station when you first go into the gates of the, of the campground. So you could fill your tank up, use the onboard pump, and uh, you have regular water pressure just like you would if you had city water. So it allows you to camp in those places that don't have plumbing on the campsite. You only, you only use this if there's no plumbing on the campsite. Almost always you'll use this one. This is a black tank flush for your black tank. Um, after you dump your black tank, you can bring the hose at the dump station over to here, hook it on there and it'll actually spray the inside of your tank and clean it out even better and keep and clean the sensors up also. Now, this one has two gray tanks. So right here is the main one. Um, you can see that get this right here. That's this is in. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I know you can't see very well, but using a phone isn't isn't uh, the best. But it's what we've got right now. So um, basically, you're going to pull the black tank first. You know, you have, you'll have your hose on here, obviously, and it'll be in the dump station. You pull your black tank first. And then you'll pull the gray one, the gray one, because the gray is cleaner water than the black water. The black tank holds toilet water and waste, and then the the gray one holds sink and shower water. So it's just cleaner, dirty water than the black water. So you you uh, you'll do that second, the gray tank second. Um, and then you can, like I said, you can go up and and use your black tank flush. Just make sure you have this black valve open when you when you turn on the water pressure. Okay. All right. Moving back. This is a second tank, it's a galley tank, and uh, it's a, a gray tank. Um, so you'll have to pull forward, or if you have a long enough hose, you would, you would dump this one after you dump the other ones, okay? All right, so this is your water heater. Right now it's empty. You can see there's where the plug goes. Here, this is the plug, right? So right now it's empty. You drain it right there. Before you drain it, always make sure you let the pressure out of the tank or else you get drenched when you uh, take that plug out. So you always um, um, let the pressure out first, okay? All right. These are just cable and satellite through to the entertainment area. You have a platform for the back that folds up. Um, it's in the down position now, obviously. This is also where you plug in your 50 amp cord. This is a 50 amp system, so it has a really large cord. We give you a reducer to reduce it down to 30 amp and then down to 15. Keep in mind, if you're plugging it in into a, at home to, at a, to a 15 amp service, you can't run the air conditioner because it'll pop a circuit breaker because there's not enough amps to, to run it. This is another um, propane hookup for a quick connect. It draws from your tanks, okay? That's the service panel for your refrigerator. You don't have to really go in there. That's just for service. That is the furnace vent. And up there is, is this dock trailer is pre-wired for a backup camera. So if you're gonna get one, we do sell them. You can talk to our parts people. But if you get one, it has to be a Furion camera that fits into that housing. Um, Basically, when you turn your running lights on, it'll light up the camera and you can see behind you when you're backing up or you can leave it on going down the road, whichever you choose. It connects wirelessly to a little monitor you keep up in your, in your tow vehicle. Also, while we're looking up here, you have to inspect the roof of your trailer. All trailers are the same. They have to be inspected and sealed if needed. So you're gonna go up there three times a year. You're gonna go up there in the spring and in the fall and then, and then once in the middle of the summer you can walk around up there, you're just going to look at all the seals and make sure they're good and tight. Make sure there's no uh, uh, cracking started, no um, separation at all. And when you do see that, because some year you're going to see it, you have to get it taken care of, okay? Uh, you have to inspect the roof of your trailer three times a year, okay? All right, so here we go. So first we'll send the slide rooms out. You have three slide rooms in this one. You have a bedroom slide, 
which is here. Forgive my camera work here. It's in right now. So you got a bedroom slide and then a door slide kitchen and an off door side slide. So we'll start with the off door side, which is right here. Um, so we're going to go out. Just so you know, the type of slide this is with the pulley system is called an Accu slide. Um, there's different types of slide outs. This one's an Accu slide. Okay. Always make sure that everything's out of the way. There's plenty, of, make sure there's room outside and there's nothing that's gonna hit on the inside like a cupboard door or a drawer or anything like that. Okay, we'll go to number two, which is the door side kitchen slide. You can see it's got your uh, uh, range in there and it's got also the entertainment centers on it. Okay. So that one's out right there and then number three is your bedroom slide I can't show you it more than this when I'm holding the button here so I'm just gonna hold it till it gets out okay the last button is for your, your power awning which is here to extend it now let me look here before we do anything to see if the door has to be what position the door has to be in so this this door you've got enough room here so even if it's all the way open the arm and arm won't hit it so you're good there okay all right so let's roll it out you can see i got the lights on now okay so out it goes never leave this out unattended if you leave the campground you uh roll the awning up because wind can come up very quickly and damage it it's a very common insurance claim because uh, it happens so fast so when you see the awning tube there you know you're all the way out okay and you can pull down at that joint there you can oh, let me see if you can you can see that it even says so right on that stick right now if you can see it from here but if you want to pitch it a bit you can just pull down on there and pitch it okay i'm going to roll it in because it's getting kind of windy so we're going to retract it. Okay. You got to be patient for the awning. It moves very slow. But it's the, it's the gear ratio, ratio, so you have to, that's the way it has to be. Okay. All right. So, entertainment center. You have a fireplace here. This works on 110 AC. You got a remote for it, and you can use the buttons over there. So you turn it on, like so. Right now it's on L, which is low. That's the fan, that's the fan speed. Um, high, off, and low are the fan speed. Okay, the temperature goes up like so. Okay. Um, the lights, you can change the backlighting. It's kind of difficult to see, but nevertheless, um, you can dim it like that. Actually, L is for light, I'm sorry. I guess that's what it stands for. Okay, and you have uh, also have a timer on here, so you can set the timer. All right, all right. The, um, this, when you hook your TV up to here, you're going to hook it up to here. This, this should always be green. This is a signal booster for the digital, in, digital antenna. You can turn it off, but you're always going to want it on. Make sure when you buy a bracket, if you can, get it one that locks into place. Get a nice swing out bracket, like a scissor type that locks into place. Spend the extra money, that way you don't have to have straps on it to hold it, hold it in place while you're traveling. This is your sound right here. And, and video. It, it displays DVDs and CDs right here. Um, you can stream off a USB stick, video or audio. You could put, a, you know, 20 albums on a little stick and take it with you. Um, it has two zones, inside and outside the trailer. One is inside, two is outside. You can also hook it up to it wirelessly with Bluetooth to play the music on your phone or tablet. So it does a lot. And um, 
Of course, you can learn more about it by reading the uh, manual, but that's basically it. Um, it will play, obviously it's wired so it'll play DVDs through your TV set. It does not play Blu-ray, but it plays uh, regular DVDs and CDs, okay? All right, so we'll shut that. Okay, moving down. Oh, let's see here. Obviously, obviously uh, lots of storage. Your sink works like any other sink. The microwave works like any other microwave. Nothing unique about it. Uh, you got a range hood for the light. Your range top itself. Um, you have to, I don't know if I can turn the gas on or not. Yes, I did. Okay. So, let me see if I can get a good picture here. So, I'm going to turn it on to light. Then I'm going to turn this clockwise. See, it lights right up. You can do that for each one. Um, the oven, you have to light with a grill lighter, so it has to have a long neck on it. Under here, you'll have to trust me when I tell you, towards the back, there's a pilot light. Okay? Uh, so what you'll do is you'll go to pilot, you'll depress it, and hold it down. Then with the other hand, you'll light the pilot light. Once it lights, you hold it for about 10 seconds or so to heat it up. And then you come up here and go to operating temperature, whichever one you want. It'll cycle on and off like a regular oven, but when you turn it off, the flame goes off obviously but so does the pilot light so you'll have to relight the pilot each time you use the uh, oven okay all right let me close this so always keep this closed when you're traveling too so it doesn't break okay the refrigerator is a nor cold automatic refrigerator um it will run on 110 ac and on lp gas you can change the mode here so that's gas, that's what that's telling you. Um, that's automatic. Automatic means electric in the sense that it'll always take parameters. Electricity will, so um, let me get to auto. So why they call it auto is if you're using, the, you're using it at a campground and you have a power failure, it'll automatically switch over to gas. That's what it's telling you right there. So that's why they call it auto. You can run it dedicated to electricity or dedicated to gas but generally it's best to keep it just like that okay all right and you can set your temperature here obviously you're gonna have it up all the way almost always okay and then you hold it for a second to get it to shut off okay um inside decent size freezer also like so okay all right you have a wine cooler here okay this is your power converter this will, this basically converts 110 AC down to 12 volts DC. Some things have to be 110 AC in this trailer, like the microwave or the air conditioner, for example. So you have regular household circuit breakers here. Um, then the power is converted down to 12 volt DC on this side. Um, and you have automotive style fuses here, and they're all labeled. That's all stuff that runs on DC power. Um, and... Uh, if any of these fuses would blow, you can actually they light up and you can actually see them through this tinted plastic. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery has in it up front. And uh, if it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. If it's if it's charged, it'll trickle a couple, whatever it needs to uh, to uh, excuse me to keep um, charged. Now I left the panel off here purposely. There's your panel. It's held on with screws. This one has six of them number two square headed screws like that so you need a square headed bit all right i left it off because i to show you that where the bypass valves are now you have to bypass your water heater you might already know all this um but you have to bypass the water heater before you put pump antifreeze into the system to winterize it you do that here when the valves are parallel with the line that, that's the line that's open um so right now um, we're bypassed still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to camping mode because there's we've we've dewinterized it. So this is this right here is the bypass line, right? So right now, if you look at this inlet to the water heater is closed because it's perpendicular instead of parallel with the line. So when antifreeze is pumped in, it can't get to through this point, so it loops through the bypass line, right? Um, 
and therefore it's called bypass mode. You don't, in the water, the antifreeze won't go into the water heater. Like, I don't know if I mentioned that leaves a really foul taste and a foul smell. That's why you don't let it get in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to close. This is the bypass line. Then I'm going to open this. So right there, now it's set for camping mode. So when you turn on your... Uh, uh, water heater. I always make sure there's water in it before you turn it on, but right now it's set up so it'll fill with water normally. That's camping mode. Okay? Alright. Okay, dinette table, obviously. You got two theater seats. You pull the, the rip cord there to, for the footrest to come up. This couch folds out to a tri panel. So you're just going to take the cushions off, you're going to lift it up here, pull it forward, let the legs down, and then flap, flap the back panel down, and it's ready to go. All right. Okay, so back at the panel here. Um, this is uh, how you light your water heater on gas. You're just going to flip that on. If you want to run it on electric, which most people run it on electric, you'll do that. Just make sure there's water in it. And the water pump I told you that you use for winterizing and to pump your fresh water if you don't have plumbing on the campsite, that's turned on there. Also, you check your levels here, your battery, it's totally charged, but check it when you're not plugged in. Fresh water tank is empty. You see it gradu up, graduates up in one third, whoops, I'm sorry, up in one third increments when it, when, as it fills. Your black tank is empty. Your first gray tank is empty. And then the second gray tank for the kitchen, it, or galley tank it's called, but it's still a gray tank, that's empty. So they graduate up, oops, I'm sorry, I keep moving the camera. They graduate up, so when you get past two-thirds full, you know you're going to have to start thinking about dumping it. Okay, this is your thermostat. If you hit the mode button once to light it up, then you scroll through it. The fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. Cool is air conditioning. Always try to run it on auto, right? And then there's heat. Now there's a lag time for everything. So I, I turned on the heat, but nothing's happened. But right there, it just kicked on. So that was a good five seconds or more. So keep in mind, whenever you switch to different source or your, your um, or I'm to a different appliance or you're turning them on and off, there's always a lag time. To turn it off, you just light it up and go one more push and it shuts it off. Okay? This device down here is your, let me change hands here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. If it ever goes off, you go outside, you turn off the gas and figure out what's going on. Okay. This is pre-wired for a second air conditioner. That's why it's a 50 amp system. It would go right here. That's what that plate's all about. So keep in mind, this is pre-wired for a, a second air conditioner. You just, it's just basically a, a easy install. Okay, um, uh, this is your, your escape window, just want to show that to you. You open it this way, you can use it for regular ventilation like that. But to escape, you'd push it all the way through, and then you would grab a hold of this tab and pull the screen loose, it's just held in by clips, and out you go. Okay, let me close that. I think the rest is pretty much self-explanatory in here. You, this lifts up, you've got a... A lot of storage under the bed, a lot of lights, I never even turned them on, but a lot of lights, okay, and this brings us to the bathroom, okay, so, I left this panel off too so you could see it, you still have to educate yourself more if you don't know about winterization, but this is a, this is a little more of a tutor, so, of a tutorial. Um, so this hose here, let me try and see, get a picture. I know my camera work is lousy. I, I'm not a, I'm using my phone here and it's not, it's not the best. But basically, this would go into the gallon of antifreeze right here, right? You, you can see that this handle right now is parallel with this line. So if you turn down the pump, which is right there, you turn on the water pump, it would suck the antifreeze through that line and, and, and throughout the system, basically. And it would push the fresh water out. Remember, you would have bypassed your water heater already. Okay? Um, so that's how you get antifreeze into the system. Is this, this trailer will take two gallons. Normally, it's going to be in this position. 
just like that. See now it's parallel with the line that goes down underneath the trailer. That goes to the fresh water tank. So right now it's ready to be camped in. If you were to fill a fresh water tank and turn on the water pump, it'll draw water from the tank. That's the what you want. Okay. So that's why I left the panel off for you. Um, this GFCI, all the uh, plugs will be wired through this. So if you're using a plug on the outside with a coffee pot, it pops. You're always going to reset it there. Okay. The shower works like any other shower. You've got a vent and a fan. Use the fan with the shower to pull the humidity out. And last but not least, you have the toilet. Now, the thing to remember about RV toilets, in case you don't know, is that you can't use them dry. Um, so, you got a foot pedal here to flush it. So, if the water was hooked up, right now water would be swirling out and going into the black tank. The black tank is directly below, right? So what you're going to do, when, once you hook up your water and your power, you'll come in here and you'll dump a, a dose of chemical in there, whichever chemical you use, um, and then you'll step on it and put about a gallon or two a gallon of water in there. There's no way to tell that exactly, you just have to get used to doing it. It's basically you're putting a little bit of water in there with chemical because you don't want to use it dry. Um, after that, every time you flush it, it adds water. So let's say you were going to stay on the campground, but your tank needed to be dumped. So you would dump your black water tank, and if you're staying on, or your yeah, in a, your black tank, and if you're staying at the campground, you'd come back in and repeat that procedure. You put some chemical in there, stand on it, put a little bit of water in there to get you started. Now, when you take when you flush it, it'll only fill about up to here with water. So if you want to add more water, like up to here, like most people would. There's a spot here where you step on the pedal, but the trap doesn't open. When you do that, the water valve turns on, so you can fill it up as high as you want before you use it, and then flush it, but you'll have to do that each time uh, you use the toilet. You have to fill it up to the level you want, okay? All right, I think we've done it. Let's see here. Let me look around real quick. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Okay. This one has a second GFCI. I mentioned there was one in the bathroom. So I can't tell you exactly where it splits, but some of the plugs will be wired into this one and others will be wired into the one in the bathroom. So you have two, two possible GFIs to reset, okay? All right, I think that does it. So um, you'll have more questions. You can call us and we can talk you through things. Uh, there's a manual for every appliance in here. You can refer to videos online. Um, manufacturers videos are the best. I try to stick with those. Your hitch, we'll show you how it works when you get here, but you can always refer back to the Husky Centerline site and they've got really good hookup videos. Um, so we'll get past it with this virus thing uh, one way or the other. So um, there's a bit of a learning curve. I don't know how much you know about camping. You could, you could be an expert or a first timer. I don't know. So um, well, I'm just talking like like you don't know just because that's that's the safest way to do it. So okay Well, thank you for purchasing from National RV Detroit and goodbye